Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Medical Mondays. It's another great day. However, before we start, I'd like to um, give you an update on Dr. Jennifer Jones. The last time we met, I made excuses. She wanted to be with us, Dr. Jennifer Jones, but she couldn't the last time we met. And, um, but didn't say much more than that. She had some health challenges and had to be hospitalized, had to have a procedure. She's doing very well. She said, I should send her greetings to everybody and um, let you know how much she misses being here. But by the grace of God, she'll be back with us in a couple of weeks. So I will be handling Medical Mondays and I'm excited that we have a session today on COVID, COVID-19. But before we go into that se segment, I would like to do some housekeeping. Uh, if you have a question for this session, please raise your hand. I think it would be better raising your hand, but if you don't feel like talking, if you would like to still put your question in the chat box, go ahead and do so. And um, I will get to those questions. We have people online who are also looking in, um, co-hosting with me and together we will, uh, we will answer all your questions. For people who are new on the forum, I am Toyin Okwesomi, popularly known as Dr. O. I am a family practitioner, HIV specialist, and I treat addictions. I have a heart for missions, a heart for bridging health disparities. I love serving the underserved as well as the whole population. I have patients across the board, the rich, the poor, um, and all colors. And by the grace of God, I'm able to see patients from babies to any age. And as I said, uh, also treat HIV and addictions. We have practices in Baltimore, Laurel, and Landover, Maryland. Genesaret Medical Center, where I am the uh, CEO and medical director and medical director at Global Vision Foundation, our nonprofit organization, as well as Global Vision Community Health Center. If you have questions about me, please ask. The forum is free tonight, but without much ado, I'm going to uh, start our presentation tonight. So I will share my screen. Our conversation tonight is on COVID. COVID resurgence. Have we finally gotten control of COVID or is there a resurgence in COVID-19? Well, I'm going to start with some statistics from the CDC as of yesterday, July 11th they recorded that we've had almost 34 million cases of COVID-19 virus. We have 26,742 cases as of yesterday. And the seven day case rates though has gone down to 0.037 percent, which is fantastic. The total deaths is 604,000. 604, New deaths is not 604,000, it's about 24,000. Pardon me, that's, uh, that's typo. The state reported its second lowest daily positivity rate and the seven day positivity rate also dropped tremendously, the lowest since September 28, 2020. That is excellent news for us. The case rate drops, dropped, hospitalization dropped, and almost 5.5 million people have been vaccinated 
in the United States. We believe that the vaccinations is a big part of the reason why we have these drops, but we must not forget that a lot of people also have been infected, um, survived the virus and developed immunity. So CDC kept updating us. They've been doing an excellent job to keep up abreast of COVID-19. However, they have changed, they have updated the modes of COVID-19 transmission. Inhalation is a big one. You know, when people talk, just talking to each other, if they have COVID, they actually exhale. That, mean, that means they breathe out the COVID virus and can infect others. When people sing and they have COVID, just imagine, I see this online all the time, doing my online church. I see the choir singing without mask. And you can imagine if, if one of them has COVID, they would just be pumping it out like that um, into the population because the droplets of the virus would just be easily transmitted. People release the respiratory, respiratory droplets or particles as they exhale, as they breathe out. When you breathe in, you don't, but when you breathe out, if you have COVID, you're breathing out the virus. When people are exercising, it's the same way, coughing and sneezing and I will take the liberty at this point to suggest that when we are coughing or sneezing, we need to do it into our elbow like this and not into our hands. Because the number, th number three way that COVID is transmitted now by you know, touching surfaces, one of the ways that can occur or that can become dangerous is coughing into one's hands and then touching a surface, depositing the virus on that surface, and the next person who touches is that surface and touch their face, eyes, nose, would definitely get the virus. So the way we cough is very important. The way we sneeze is very important. We need to do it, I'll repeat, into our, into our elbows. The question has come up that, is reinfection possible in people who have been infected with COVID-19? Yes, we have seen it, but it is rare. We've got to remember also that people who get infected with COVID develop antibodies to COVID, but there was a study that came out of Colombia last year, last year around April, that was very troubling, um, suggesting that people can lose their antibodies after infection within two months. In my setting, I test my patients who have been positive, who have tested positive for COVID for antibodies to see if they are still immune. And all of my patients so far still have antibodies. And since we now have ability to test quantitatively, I actually am doing that also to see the amount of antibodies that they do have. And the good news that I have in my setting is that they still have antibodies and they add to the number of people who are helping the, um, the control of the virus right now. So how do we stay safe? CDC's criteria has changed, has not changed rather. Their criteria for infection has changed, but the criteria for prevention and staying safe has not changed. They continue to suggest maintaining physical distancing, which makes sense. I just explained how one can be um, infected. And so if you have that six feet distance, you decrease the chance of getting respiratory droplets. The droplets that are large would fall down and dry up quickly, but the small particulate ones the small droplets hang in the air and they can hang in the air for minutes to hours. So it's important 
to maintain distance and to still be careful, even though the numbers are going, have gone down tremendously. We need to wear masks. I suggest that we continue to wear a mask. In many states, the governors have decided that people should not wear masks or use discretion. Businesses should use this question. Like in the state of Maryland, our governor has been amazing. Governor Hogan listened to scientists, research, what is going on, compared numbers, and in May, I think I have this slide here, I'm not sure, that in May, um, the governor, based on report that the incidence of COVID had gone down tremendously in the state of Maryland. Hospitalization has gone down tremendously. He decided that people who have been vaccinated can go out into open areas without masks. If you're not vaccinated, it's still suggested that you wear masks. And he also, he also talked about closed places, um, closed environs that we have to be still careful in those environments. It gave opportunities to people like me in private practice, businesses and um, hospitals to make a decision what they wanna do. In our setting, we still mandate mask wearing. And I would explain that you know, in a few minutes. When we wear a mask, we need to wear it properly. If you wear your mask and it's beneath your nose, you're really not wearing a mask. If you wear your mask and it's on your chin, then you're not wearing a mask. I see lots of people with masks, you know, underneath the nose, especially. Um, if you're wearing the surgical mask, it has a string. String area is the area that should go up on the nose. You can then taper it to make it yours. To that ear is not going out from anywhere. So wearing masks and wearing it properly, you do wear it, is important. A new study from NIH uh, that humidity levels in the um, is what, pardon me, humidity levels in the mask may help delay or prevent infection. It's also found that Heavy cotton mask led to the increase of humidity. Cotton mask are actually more protective. They compared N95 mask, three ply disposable surgical mask, and two ply cotton polyester mask. For whatever that is worth, the cotton heavy are protective. Hand washing is very important. Because like I said, some people may cough wrongly. You don't know that you've done that get to that place. And the small droplets, small um, particulates hang in the air and on um, tabletops, on surfaces. So as we touch places, we need to wash our hands. Soap is the best to use, but in the absence of soap, hand sanitizers will do. Still, I suggest that we should work partying in closed environments, that large gatherings should be done outside where there's air and um, less chances of getting too close together. So, why did I decide to revert back to COVID tonight? It's really because of the new variants. In December, 2020, we learned that the UK variant will become the most predominant variant in the US and that we already had it in the US. It's associated with increased death compared to other variants at that time. But the vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J &J covers it for those who get the vaccines. Then we learned about the South African strain. At the end of January, 
at the same time that we learned about the Brazilian strain that the vaccines don't cover. Now we have the Delta strain. The reason I decided that we should dialogue on COVID-19 again is because of the Delta. The Delta strain that came from India. It is very infectious and aggressive and deadly. Masks are coming off. It is postulated, suggested, but research is still going on. Don't take my word for it, that vaccines that we have probably cover it. But I want us to remember that with the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, there's still 10% chance of contracting the virus to start off with. So my admonition is that we still need to be careful. We need to maintain physical distancing like CDC suggests as of yesterday, we should wear a mask and we should engage in good hand washing. I see many of my patients who don't want to take the vaccine. In Maryland, for instance, we've had as of July 4th, 75% of our population vaccinated. So that does not put into account those who have uh, contracted COVID and developed antibodies. So my gut feeling is that we most likely have the herd immunity in Maryland, but that's Maryland. What about other states? What about other countries? A very good friend of mine from Uganda was just asking me the um, regimen, the treatment, or the dosing um, for ivermectin because COVID is ravaging Uganda as we speak. In most African countries, we don't have accurate numbers of what is actually going on in these countries. They don't have enough COVID testing to even know how many people are infected. Many people don't go to the hospitals. Some die at home. Um, many treat themselves. In Nigeria, I hear a lot that people will say they have severe malaria or severe typhoid when they actually have COVID. Access is not great to um, testing or even hospitalizations. So getting accurate numbers is not, um, uh, is not a thing in a lot of our African countries. So what can we do? Prevention, physical distancing, wearing masks, good hand washing. We need to call home and let our people know. Any Ugandas on the forum, please call and let people know that preventing, protecting oneself, is the best way anytime, any day to deal with disease entities, viral or bacterial. I don't like to be, you know, carrier of horrible news. I wanna share that there are some good things that have come about with COVID. One of it is what we're doing here. We've started utilizing social media like Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, um, several others more to communicate with each other, to communicate nationally and internationally. On the forum today, I shout out to uh, my sisters and brothers from Nigeria, from Liberia, from Ghana. Um, last time we met, I don't know if you remember um, one of our sisters who came from Ghana. And um, today she invited a guest to come from Ghana to participate in Medical Mondays. That's COVID that caused us to be able to do this. I have sisters and brothers from Nigeria who don't miss Medical Mondays. My sister, uh, Sister Kendi Ayodele, I saw her coming in. She's on right now. And I know there are others on. So COVID has done that for us. What about working from home? Um, 
saving overhead costs for businesses and having employees work from home. COVID cost us to be able to do that. We've been able to continue to socialize. That's why I refuse all the time to accept that phrase, um, social distancing. It's physical distancing we've been doing, not social. We socialize all the time. We actually have been spending more time with each other since COVID than before COVID. Isn't that interesting? Because we do it through social media. Another good news is there's light at the end of the tunnel, but I hate to bust our bubble um, because CDC stated yesterday that we still need to pay attention to other variants that may be showing up. I believe there's light at the end of the tunnel because of the numbers we're getting. The less, the, 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 the less infection, infection rates, the uh, decrease in hospitalization, and um, even in states where people are not wearing masks anymore. So that's great, but please still be mindful. We can still get other variants and our experts are warning us that that can happen. Um, one thing I wanna say also is that people have been asking questions about the possibility of getting a third dose of the vaccines. Um, all that we have now, does not point to the need for a third vaccine. Um, from what we have right now, we see that the two vaccines are good enough coverage and we will not need a third one. So I'm gonna now yield to the floor to anyone who may have questions. So the question, the question here is what can people do to increase the immune system? Well, our pulmonologists have suggested zinc, 50 milligram a day, vitamin D, I suggest 2,000 uh, 2, to 5,000 international units a day, vitamin C, 1,000 milligram a day, melatonin, especially if you have difficulty sleeping. Um, and good rest, decreasing anxiety, exercise. All these things increase immunity. In fact, something is something I didn't mention is that a lot of people get COVID and survive it. People who are at increased risk for COVID are those who have certain comorbidities like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and smoking. So if someone has any of this, this is the time to start working on them. Quit smoking, lose weight, control your diabetes, your high blood pressure, not even because of COVID, but because it's the right thing to do to have strong health, strong future is the right thing to do. So give your temple, the temple of God, good health. Some of the questions here I have discussed, I've discussed the Delta variants and other variants. Um, the symptoms, somebody is asking of the symptoms of Delta variants. The, the symptoms are the same. And when I say that, it's a blanket statement. COVID is a virus like no other virus. It's a virus that displays different symptoms in different individuals for reasons we don't know yet. The, the um, symptoms that we knew from the beginning are fever, shortness of breath, cough. Then we see some people will lose sense of taste, sense of smell. I've had patients who their only symptom was reflux that was out of this world, that regular reflux medication did not treat. Steroids was what I used 
in each case to abort their symptoms. I saw a patient, believe it or not, what, she, what he had was leg pain and he went to test for COVID. When he called me and he said he had leg pain and he went to test for COVID, I asked why. Somebody having leg pain, I would not have told them to go test for COVID. He said it just felt strange. And what is going on now in the world is COVID. So he decided to go test. So when he went to test, he went to patient first. And thank God they prescribed zinc, vitamin D. They prescribed, I think is uh, Zitromax. And when he called me, I added steroid. He, I thank God for that because the next day he crashed. For the next 10 days, he was deadly ill. When he started desaturating, meaning his oxygen saturation started going down because I got him to monitor it every day. And I, I see my COVID positive patients every day by telemed. I told him to go to the emergency room and he was admitted for another five days before he cleared the virus. But his symptom was leg pain. So what are the symptoms of COVID? The usual then, <laughs> you know, it could be anything. What I would recommend is be vigilant, test. In the United States, we have access to testing in all states, as far as I know, test. It doesn't hurt to know when you have any symptom um, that, you suspect could be COVID or you know something different from your usual. And um, contact your doctor, ask questions. Somebody asked, is it okay to play soccer with friends without mask? Whew. I say yes. Now, yes, if this question has been asked, like two months ago, I would say no. But today, if you are vaccinated, yes, you can play soccer without mask. Another person asks, what makes the Delta variant more transmissible? Um, it is the mutation is, it has 17 different um, um, spike areas in it. And um, if you, in case you don't know, it is the spike protein that the COVID virus um, uses when it gets into the, a victim to start reproducing. And this variant has 17 different areas. So that's why it's more transmittable, more deadly. Another question ask if ginger boosts immunity or just an anti-inflammatory. Um, I have a natural path on the forum today and I'm going to defer to her. Dr. Mary Olodun, I'm asking you to unmute. If you please answer that question and you know, tell us a little bit more about how to fortify our body, how to increase our immune system. Thank you. Hi, Dr. O. This is Dr. Mary. How's everybody? Okay, well, to get to the point, ginger. Ginger is absolutely a natural anti-inflammatory. It does help with especially the gut system, but it can indeed help to support the immune immunity as well. And so there allies in the ginger. You also have so many other different great herbs. I do recommend this time in our lives to be actively taking garlic every day. Even if you can't stand the smell of garlic, go ahead and invest in getting the garlic pills that has the parsley in it that helps to absorb the odor, but also um, oregano is a great one. And then I would give you two others, silver biotic. That's one that a lot of people don't know about, but silver biotic is perfectly safe for 
um, a daily ingestion, and it does help a lot with um, keeping the immunity strong. And then, of course, everybody's been talking about our elderberries. So you do, in fact, want to take the elderberries because an ounce of elderberry can have more vitamin C contained um, than uh, five oranges, I think it is. But I would just tell you to um, to go ahead and put those in your cabinets, keep them in your fridge, and then just be active with taking them naturally. Don't over anything. Too much of a good thing is still not good for you. So try not to do too much more than a daily dose. How about that? Okay. And I appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. O. I'm going to turn it back over to you and sign off unless there are other questions. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for that wealth of information as usual. Somebody just asked, if one is fully vaccinated, would you encourage international travel? That's, um, that's what all countries are saying. Guess what? Um, in St. Lucia, I can tell you because I have some inside information, they want you to upload your um, vaccination card. They're not asking you not to travel to them if you're not vaccinated. You can travel to St. Lucia, but they said your activities will be expanded. Those are the exact words. If you're fully vaccinated, or I've had one vaccine and it's been two weeks or more since you had the first vaccine. So every country is different in what they require. Some countries are not asking for that. A lot of countries are not, but I know of St. Lucia um, asking about that. So it depends on the country one is going to. Um, Abby, welcome from Britain, from London. Um, she says, she knows people that have taken the two jabs required to prevent COVID, but have tested positive for COVID after the vaccinations. How should they treat? Excellent question. I will, <laughs> I will answer that. They still have to be treated the same way we treat somebody who has COVID. They have COVID. Remember, I mentioned um, when I was presenting that these vaccines cover 90%. So you still have 10% chance that after fully vaccinated, you may still get COVID. And that's why we still need to be careful. Um, Governor Hogan in the state of Maryland, I know he said that even when you're fully vaccinated, um, it, de it defined how once you still interact in different settings, outside as opposed to inside enclosures and stuff like that, he still recommends masking. You know, when you, you've realized that you are in a place that is not well ventilated. So yes, can you get both vaccines and still get COVID? Yes, you can. And I have seen lots of people who after the first vaccine contracted COVID. Um, that is true. Um, somebody just texted me asking a question about saying something online that people who got the vaccine have developed a magnetic force in the area of injection. A magnetic force in that they said if you put any metallic thing close to where the injection site was, um, it would magnetize it. I have not seen that. I would like to see that. And I've not read any articles, you know, um, about that. I've not seen it on any of the CDC or NIH websites. So I've not seen that. And I don't, uh, as far as the mRNA vaccine and J&J, um, &J, uh, there's nothing that suggests that there's anything magnetic in the in the constitution of the vaccines. Any other questions? Well, um, quick one, just um, exactly what you mentioned. Could it also therefore mean that we need to be very careful where we go in for the vaccine? Because if maybe 
there could be a fake manufacturer somewhere or something that is going on somewhere else. We have to be very careful about it so we don't, instead of getting help, we don't get hurt. Thank you so much for that comment. And um, before I address that, I just want to thank um, Dr. Mary Olodo uh, because she has chatted. She has not heard of that too. Our opinion is very important to me. She's our naturopath. And so I want to know if there's something in the naturopathic area that I've seen that or suggested that she has not either. Um, my brother AJ just brought up an important uh, point. We have found that in Nigeria, some people were given fake vaccines. The same thing in India. Someone called me that two people traveled in from India to a wedding here in Maryland and uh, they had COVID, the Delta virus infected a number of people and five of those infected have died. This person called me because they were scared of out of their wits. They wanted answers. They don't know how to handle this because remember in our state, the mask rules have just been relaxed and then this. So did these two people from India get vaccines and they were fake vaccines because they said thousands of people had been vaccinated before they realized that. Um, we do need to educate our people in, um, in our countries to be careful and to make sure that they get vaccines in the government facilities. My investigations shows that if you go to the government um, facilities, you will get authentic vaccines. In the United States, we don't have any record of fake vaccines. Thank God for that. So our vaccines here are, are good. They're wonderful. Um, another question is about reports of anyone who has taken ivermectin prophylaxis getting COVID. I have not seen any. I actually know about a whole neighborhood in Nigeria that was prophylaxed and I still have not gotten a report of anyone getting COVID after that um, prophylaxis. I, I'm involved in a research going on at University of Lagos on ivermectin. CDC has not taken um, a firm stand on ivermectin. I've read things here and there. Uh, and that's because they're still waiting on researches all over. There have been researches on ivermectin in several countries, but um, they, I think they were still awaiting peer review at some point when Dr. Pierre presented December 2020. He did say in that presentation to the Senate that a peer review would take a while and was pleading that ivermectin be used for prophylaxis and that it doesn't counteract the use of vaccines. You can still prophylax and still get vaccines. Um, but since CDC has not given the go ahead, um, Physicians' are, hands are tied. But I know that in African countries where the profit, they've been used as prophylaxis, they, people have actually not gotten COVID, as far as I know. And they actually also used them in early COVID, early infection with some um, effectiveness. I will answer other questions in a, in a few minutes. I want to talk, though, about the winner today of our, um, of our awards that we give every week. Our winner again is Ephraim and Hannah Ajay. So if we would all please unmute and just give them a clap. They invited, they invited, over 10 people. Ooh, congrats. Thank you. Thank you so much 
for always being there, for always showing up, co-hosting and bringing the most number of participants um, to the forum. We appreciate you. Thank you. Um, I'm encouraging everyone else to do the same. And if you do, please email us at medicalmondays, D-R-O at gmail.com. That's medicalmondays, Dr. O at gmail.com. And let us know that you bring more than 10 people. Email today so that for next week we would have it and uh, we will present you with a gift. The gift today is a gift card. And Hannah and AJ, we will get in touch with you um, to give that to you, Amazon gift card. So I see some other questions in the chat box. One asks for the efficacy of the ivermectin to vaccine. I don't know of any research that has compared the efficacy of ivermectin to the vaccine, but there has been many research, many researches looking at the um, efficacy in early infection and also for prophylaxis. Maybe in the future, there'll be researchers looking at, you know, comparing that, but we don't have any going on right now that I know of. So I don't know if I missed any question in the, in the chat box. If I miss, missed your question, please raise your hand and ask the question so I can do my best to answer it. There's a question that says that you should talk a little bit about it, children and vaccines. Oh, if you will. So, thank you. The research that was done when the vaccines were um, being tested was done up to, I think, age 18. And then later on, it was brought down to 16. Other researches are being done to, um, on children to see if it is safe for children to take the vaccine. And as you know, the results come out, we will keep updating you on Medical Mondays um, to let you know. A concern that people have, and I got that question also, somebody texted me um, asking me about that, is what is the long-term effect of these vaccines? We don't know. We don't know the long-term effect. Like everything else, time will tell. When we start using a new medication, we follow this, you know, the pre, um, the, the research period before it rolls out to the general population. And the in, during the research period, we report adverse effects, we report efficacy and all of that before it is approved. After approval and it goes out into the population, we also continue to follow um, the general public. We do because that is how we learn um, more about the medication. In this case, the vaccine is the same thing. We follow them and for physicians, when we you start using a new medication and we see something that is noteworthy, we actually contact the um, pharmaceutical com company so that they can report it. And they can, they can look for that same syndrome um, across the board to see if it is something to pay attention to. That is why sometimes you will see that medications are pulled out of the market. See when it was still in the research period, things that were not found and then found later can cause a medication to be pulled out of the market. And that happens. So we don't know the long-term effects of these vaccines, but trust me, a lot of researches are going on. Eyes are on um, the, what's going on. People have been vaccinated and uh, we will be getting reports as time goes on. I would like to shout out to Dr. Alabad Doherty from Nigeria. Dr. Doherty from Nigeria, can you unmute please and say hello? 
Oh, hello. Hello, welcome to Medical Mondays. Thanks, good Dr. morning Ho. over there. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Thanks, Dr. Ho. You are doing a good job. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Dr. Doherty. It is the Lord. I cannot take his credit. So all glory to him. And I'm looking forward to you coming to um, educate us on Medical Mondays. Oh, okay, ba. okay, ba. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank okay. you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, we're thankful to God. Yeah, thanks. And thank, I thank Dr. Um, Anthony Tai Dugati for, intro, uh, for introducing us and for inviting him. Oh, Dr. Wallace was here too, but she's leaving. So there's another question here that says, what would one say to minorities on getting vaccinated? and why it helps the whole community. Well, thank you for that question. One of the purposes of Medical Mondays is to bridge health disparity. There is no difference in minorities and non-minorities in the research process. As far as we know, there was no difference or, you know, or reports of uh, adverse effects um, occurring in one, one race as opposed to the other. So for people who are comfortable getting the vaccine, please get it. In my practice, I never force anything on any patient. My job is to educate. I see myself as an educator. I love to educate. I take the time to do that. I want, to, I want you to know why you have what you have and um, what we need to do to, to treat it or you know, how we can prevent disease entities before they happen. So for people who are on the edge who think that this vaccine is made to hurt minorities, the answer is no. I've seen that also on social media. I've had questions asked of me about that. That is not true. Um, the vaccine is for the good of everyone. Thank you for that question. There was another question, Dr. O, on the platform. Sorry? There was another question on the platform. Yeah, go ahead. And it says that the question says, how long has ivermectin been around and what is it typically used for? And also there's a follow-up question to that same question. I'm sorry, I think uh, I missed one. Yeah, that's it, that's the only question, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, ivermectin has been around for a long time, forever, for as long as I know. I don't, I cannot tell you how many years, but it's an anti-parasitic. It's been used in especially African countries to treat parasites. It is, is safe and um, it's one of the, you know, old, older drugs that scientists who are looking into refurbished drugs, we call it refurbished drugs, that is drugs that have been in existence that we've been using to treat other disease entities. So now look at them to see if they will accord any assistance, any benefit in COVID-19. That's what we call refurbished drugs. Scientists who are looking at that um, looked at ivermectin as one of those refurbished drugs. Um, there are others that uh, have been looked at. You know of I, um, hydroxychloroquine um, was looked at also and um, some others have been looked at to see if these older drugs can benefit us and uh, can positively impact treating this uh, virus. Um, Dr. Olodu just um, posted in the chat box that it was discovered 20 years ago and went on the market 15 years ago. So it's been around for a while. 
Another question says, is ivermectin safe for all ages? I believe it's safe down to um, age four and it should not be used in pregnant women. Another one asks, still on ivermectin, can one repeat dose and how often? There, yes, there has been different dosing um, regimens suggested. Ivermectin is dosed by weight. So, um, and it comes in three milligram tablets in most places, in the US and in Nigeria, I know for sure that it comes in three milligram doses. So when you calculate the weight, uh, the, the dose for the weight, the, it is dose day one, day three, for prophylaxis now, and then every four weeks for prophylaxis. Uh, for early infection, it is dose day one, day three, day seven, and then they can take, you know, um, uh, continually also if they chose to. And Dr. Lodu um, wrote here also that it is widely used for children and animals. I think it is used for children down to age four. Any other questions? I was going to say that, so would it be also wise enough to get the younger kids who have not yet been on any radar for vaccines, probably to do the regimen of the ivermectin? Um, rather than do nothing, um, I want to state here, which I forgot to state before, that conversation here is medical conversation and you can ask your questions. We are not establishing care with anyone on this forum. Medical Mondays is a forum to disseminate um, authentic medical information, but without establishing um, medical relationship. So um, it is widely used in children. Um, it is safe in children. Like I mentioned before, it's an antiparasitic that has been used in African countries successfully for many years. Did I answer your question? Yes, I did. Thank you so much. And I like the part that you said, uh, rather than doing nothing, it's better to do some prophylaxis. And again, your point still stands. This is just to give us authentic medical knowledge. We are being empowered for protection, I mean, for, for pre prevention. Thank you. Thank you. So there's another question that I was asked about uh, super antibodies. We found, this was first reported in, I think it was at the University of Virginia, that some people, African-Americans, uh, the ones that they've seen so far, who contracted COVID, contracted, you know, developed super antibodies, meaning that they have this astronomical um, number of antibodies that they dilute and dilute and dilute and is still e effective against COVID. It is possible that this may be, these people may be the um, solution to eradication, complete eradication of COVID-19. Um, again, stay tuned. A lot of researches are going on. These are moving points. Uh, we, 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 we keep in um, the research on, um, looking forward. Nobody is really an expert here yet um, because there's still, there are still so many questions to answer. You know, I say this all the time um, when I have the opportunity to give talks, especially medically related talks, that I can come back in a few weeks, in a year, whenever, to give you another version of what I said based on new research. As we research and find out new things, we improve and we update. Sometimes we change our stance. Only the Bible does not change. It remains firm and constant. So um, research is still going on. Stay tuned on the super antibodies 
for I who developed that after getting infected with COVID. Any other questions? So if there are no other questions, I want to say that next week, by the grace of God, we will meet again. Uh, we would have an amazing speaker. Come on next week. I will send you text message, emails to let you know who our speaker will be and what we're talking on. But on the 26th of July, we will not be meeting. We're going to take a break on the 26th of July. But don't try to remember because I will remind you. And I want to thank everyone who has participated tonight. Um, Brother Charles Busari, thank you so much. Sister Daisy Jones, thank you. You know, she is always there. She hosted here on um, Medical Mondays and I, I just feel so honored that um, you made it here again tonight. Thank you. Thank you everyone, everybody from all over the US, from Canada, from Africa, different parts. Thank you. And till we see you again next week, please stay safe, maintain physical distancing, wear your mask when necessary, if necessary, in closed environments, in places you don't know, and do good hand washing where there's no soap and water, use your hand sanitizers. See you next week. God bless.